not play ball, do you? I mean, some people have to go to a ball diamond, but I think we can have some fun here today. I don't know if you recognize that little intro, but it was fun, fun, fun. Now, if there's something that I want to do, it's called I want to have fun in this whole thing. I don't want you to get scared when you look up here and think that it's under the sea. <laughs> I, don't know, I first looked at, you know, and I thought, gosh, I hope people don't think that it's under the sea. No, we're not. We're not drowning. I have good news. I have some, I have what, I have the news that God wants to tell you today. But I, I'm here to tell you that you're not drowning. And so um, this is actually a beach. And so I had to wear my sandals because I didn't, you know, want to get sand in my shoes and, and all that. And so we're going to have some fun today, but we're going to learn and we're going to just um, expect God to uh, deposit and impart that which he's going to be doing in these next 12 months. That's what which he is be going to be doing in this Hebraic year 5777. If you've been following the days of, um, of awe, we're on day 29, or at least that's the email I got this morning, and it says, the title of it is, Change is in the Air, yeah. which is great. I, how many are ready for change? Yeah. I certainly am ready for change. I like change. I mean, when things are going good, change is great. And when things aren't going so good, you can't wait for change. <laughs> right? But I'm here to announce today that three things for you that the Lord has shared with me to tell you. And the first thing I'm going to announce is that it is a year of vacation. <laughs> now, I thought you'd all be like jumping up and down. Yeah. I mean, some people live for vacation. Some people work for vacation. That's the reason they work is to get that paid vacation, right? Amen. Exactly. Well, when I think of vacation, I think because oh, I live in Michigan and we always vacation to warm climates, it seems. So when I think of vacation, I think it's going to get hot. Now, some like it hot, and some don't. Mm -hmm. I personally can handle 80 by water, but higher than that, forget it. I'm getting crab crabby. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that in announcing that it's a year of vacation, that it's going to get hot. And some of you aren't going to mind that heat whatsoever. You're going to think, man, I waited for nine months for this heat. Well, get ready. <laughs> the other thing that came to mind when God shared with me that it's a year of vacation is he must think we're tired. Okay. He must think we're tired. He must think we're weary or we're worn out. Which was a very sobering thought, right? And then you know those people that they, they're, they're gear up for vacation and then they, when they get back from vacation, they need a vacation to rest up from their vacation. Yeah, okay. So I'm not sure, you know, where God was going with that other than I do know the truth is God knows you are tired. And God knows that you are weary. And God knows you're tired of waiting. You're tired of waiting. Okay, Jesus, here's my notes. I would appreciate it if you would show up and preach them. Because I know you're a better preacher than I am. <laughs> I'm tired of waiting. We've heard our whole lives that Jesus is returning. That, you know, that you know, you've been in church. You know what you've heard. The truth is God knows we're becoming very annoyed with this whole process of trying to hang on to our faith and walk this thing out. He knows that, come on, he knows you, and I'm, I could talk about me, but we're going to talk about you. <laughs> um, that you're irritated with the whole church thing. And in the process of thinking, is this all there is? Is this really all there is? No, this isn't all there is. I'm here to announce that God says he's declaring it is a year of vacation because you need rest. And somehow I think he's talking about more than just the Sabbath rest, rest that they talk about in Leviticus 23 where you work six days and rest on the seventh. I think he's talking about more than just that one day rest. Okay. 
I know that we know a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day to God in his calendar, but I'm, I'm talking in terms of our life with six days and seven days. And I know this rest that he has for us is more than one day in a 24 hour period. Now, you might be interested, um, like I was, to really dig into the word vacation, and so um, I'll help you do that. The thing I want to preface, preface vacation with is, you know, God is a good God, and he knows what we need. And isn't it cool that he's made provision for it? He's making provision for us to rest. He's making provision for us to take a vacation. Vacation means a scheduled period during which activity is suspended. <laughs> Minister Mike is like standing up with both hands in the air and saying, I receive this. I receive this. I receive this. Yes, I receive the suspension of activity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just have to be made to be still. I do. I have to be made to be still. As much as I want to sit in that prophet's office and read my Bible, it doesn't happen unless I'm made to preach. Uh-oh, it's right. Now, I, you know, read my Bible elsewhere, but I mean, I, I want to get in this, the office of the prophet. Vacation means a period of exemption from work granted to an employee. So we're going to be exempt from working during this time. I know you're all looking at me like, I can't believe what she's saying. Hello? I can't even believe. Hello? What's the catch? What's the, catch? What's the catch, God? Are you kidding? We're just not going to work? Some of you will work at laboring into rest. But I'm just reading dictionary. That vacation is a period of exemption from work granted to an employee. A vacation is a period spent away from home or business to, in travel or recreation. Hmm. I guess I see that you're going to get away from home. I guess I see that you're going to get away from your business. Now, I'm not, don't hear me say something I didn't say. I didn't say quit your job. <laughs> I'll just clarify that. A vacation is a respite of time. It's like an intermission. It's a period of temporary, say temporary, temporary. delay. delay. It's just this, this period of time. It's temporarily a delay for you to rest because you need it. Okay. Now, we all know when you get ready to plan your vacation, you have a purpose in mind. It's to have fun, it's to, I want a zip line. I still haven't yet, it's on my bucket list. Um, you know, some of you want to ski some of you want to lay on the beach and do nothing. So you all have a purpose in mind for that vacation, right? Well, God has a purpose in mind for this vacation. Okay. So here's the catch. There's a purpose to this vacation. And the purpose is you need to reboot. When things aren't working properly, you just have to reboot. Yes. Come on, I had to reboot this morning. I wasn't in a panic yet but I couldn't print my sermon from Google Docs because the Wi-Fi wouldn't work. I had to reboot. It's a, a, the purpose of this vacation that God is granting you temporarily is so that you can be refreshed, so you can be rejuvenated, so you can be in the position to recreate. Wow, wow, there you go. Recreate. We've gotten kind of stale. We've gotten kind of stagnant. We've gotten kind of, you know, dry. <clears throat> and God knows it. And he's making provision for us to come to new places. Change is in the air. And he's making provision for us to be able to, you know, rest. Rest. 
You know what the world says, there's no rest for the weary. Is that a terrible thing to say? And it's anti-God. But the things that people say, that we hear, that, you know, honestly, sometimes it doesn't register like, wow, that is a really bad thing. I've caught myself saying some things that, you know, I've grown up around, like my dad would say, and I, I have picked it up and, you know, I'll, I'll make that phrase and Bishop will go, <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. That really is a bad phrase. No rest for the weary? Oh, I'm apparently it's no rest for the wicked. I thought it was no rest for the weary. Well, that's what I heard. <laughs> that's the Connie version. So, I don't know. We're talking about vacation. 5777. Wow, mark this down because I don't know if God will ever tell us we can have a vacation like this before. In fact, do you know those people that take a vacation to do work? Yeah. You know, they take a vacation. Heath has got his hand up. They take a vacation from their job to work at something else. Uh -huh. But anything I know about work is sometimes just a change is like what you need. Right, Becky? Like, you know, it, I remember Bishop saying, I, I just, um, you know, just a change in this problem with finances. This was years ago. Just a financial change. Just a, just a new problem would be refreshing. Right. And so just a change from our place of employment, our, our work, to do something different, even if it's classified as work, is refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like your brain thinks differently. Your body behaves differently. Amen. Now for me, summer vacation. I need it. By the time the summer vacation, as a high school teacher, by the time summer vacation gets around, I'm like, I'm ready. It is necessary before I break a commandment. Thou shalt not kill your students. <laughs> yeah, that's why they have summer break. Because by the end of the school year, Everyone is spent. Yeah. Everyone, including administration, counselors, support staff, you name it. They're spent. Yeah. So they need a break. It's necessary. It is so necessary. It rekindles our enthusiasm. I am a great teacher come you know, August 29th all the way through about April 1st. <laughs> and then I need that spring break. You know, because it, it rekindles our enthusiasm. God is saying, my people have lost their enthusiasm. They've lost their stamina. They've lost their tenacity. They've lost that which I want them to be as a witness in the earth. And so I'm giving you a rest for you to reboot and recapture some of those things that you once had. Because you did have it. It's still in there. It just got buried with all the burdens of your responsibility. Wow. Now, even Jesus told the apostles to take a rest. Mark 6, verse 30, it says, The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away, boys. No, he didn't say boys. He said, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Wow. Our lives are so crazy busy, and God knows it. And he knows that you barely have time to sit down as a family and eat together. I mean, that's like, that's not the norm anymore. Right. Now that is just wrong yeah. that we are that busy. Yeah. Yeah. And so God knows that his people need rest. Now I started digging into this word a little more and you might be as surprised as I am when you realize the next two definitions are going to blow us out of the water. Me included. A vacation really means an act or an instance of vacating. Now who thinks of that? When you think of vacation, you think of fun, beach, warm, water, fun, more fun, and more fun. Yep. <laughs> 
right? But it's an instance of vacating. In other words, vacating, it means to leave. Okay. It means to leave a job or a position. You know, in the law form of this definition, it, it means to say officially that a legal judgment is no longer valid. Vacate. A legal judgment is no longer valid. Now, you know the devil is a legalist. Yeah. Right. right? And so it's possible God is preparing us to vacate the, the, that very thing. Like we can nullify things that the enemy legally has against us. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, exemption will be null and void if you do not vacate the places that God's instructed you to. I can't help but think of the seven mountains. And we've been told and we've been taught and we've been encouraged to leave those seven mountains and, and resonate or, or take up residence rather in the mountain of God. Yes. And, and what we're supposed to do is visit those mountains like I would visit the education mountain to teach school and then I would come back and live in the mountain of God. Yeah. But unfortunately, God sees it as his people have things the reverse way. They visit the mountain of God and they live in these other seven mountains. And he's saying right now that if you don't vacate these places that I've instructed you to vacate, well, then, you know, this whole legal judgment, it's, it, you're not exempt. Yeah. It's, it can't be null and void unless you vacate those places. Excellent. Yeah. Amen. Excellent. Vacate means the action of leaving something one previously occupied. Did you hear that? Right. It's the action. In other words, you've got to do something to leave where you have previously been, where you have previously occupied. Are you in the business mountain? Are you in the um, inter arts and entertainment mountain? Are you in the religious mountain? Come on, let's not be deceived. How much of the body of Christ is in the religious mountain? Yeah. The majority. You know you're in the religious mountain when, uh, when Sunday and Wednesday is your vocabulary instead of your relationship with God. Yeah. You know you're in the religious mountain when it's all about I did this, I'm doing this, and I will do that instead of God said whatever, or God showed me, or I saw in his word. You see, it's about that relationship. Yeah. Vacating. Do you know that um, the word vacating, or actually, excuse me, vacation, comes from the Latin word freedom and exemption? Mm. You're not free, and you don't know it. Yeah. Wow. God's people are not free, wow. and they think they are. That's right. yeah. Amen. Because we go to church on Sunday and Wednesday, we think we're free. And God knows we're not. Yeah. And he is saying, hello, hello. Yes. I'm trying to help you here. I'm giving you a way to get out of that place that's holding you in bondage called these mountains. I am just tapping into this, people. I'm just tapping into what it's like to visit the education mountain and not live there. Yes. I am. It's taken me all this time. It's not easy because what's in me, and you know, maybe it's pride. I'm going to be the best teacher I can be. And I should be. But... Does that require me to be at school from 6.45 to 5.30 or 6 o'clock at night? No. How much time are we willing to spend in the mountain of God? Take the last seven days. Analyze the time that you spent. Put a spreadsheet together. How much time have you spent in this mountain and that mountain and the other mountain? And, and how much time have you spent in the mountain of God? If you're a good church attender, at least you can say four, a minimum of four hours a week, right? Yeah. With two services. But if you're not doing anything outside of that, Oh, and if you're a Bible school student, we can add a few hours on to that. But if you're not doing anything outside of that, come on, look at the ratio. Don't tell me, and not me, don't tell him that you live in the mountain of God if you spend four hours a week and add up the hours of the everywhere else. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. We've been praying for our city. We can add that as, you know, on to living in the mountain of God. 
But you know what? It's all about in here. I'm finding out, I'm experiencing that although I'm in the education mountain for a period of time during my day, there are times that most of the time I'm in that education mountain, but you know what? I feel like I'm still in the mountain of God because that's who I am. Amen. I talk about God. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's not religious. It's just when it fits, when the door opens, you know? I teach personal finance. It's called um, the borrower is lending, lender to the, or servant to the lender. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they know that's the scripture or not, but I preach it because it applies. You see, life, it applies. So I want to encourage you to vacate those places that God has already asked you to. And he's reminding you one more time. And what, the, what you don't understand is that you're not free and that those mountains are wearing you out. And that's why he said he needs to give you a vacation. All right. That's why he said he needs you to vacate those places. And then you'll see how really, how worn out that those places really make you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you come home after um, a family get together and are exhausted or you're the one that everyone comes to their, your house and it's like, Phew, shut the door, man. I'm glad they're gone. This is exhausting. <laughs> you know, hello. hello. What is taking your energy? Because it sure isn't God. That's right. Oh. And so He is saying, I'm giving you this year of temporary, uh, a temporary time, a temporary time out exemption for you to come away from, vacate those places and get over in the mountain of God. And you'll see that you will be able to reboot. You'll be able to be refreshed. You'll be able to be rejuvenated and enthusiastic about the call that God really does have on your life. Okay. okay. All right. It's been so hidden with all of the just busyness of life. I feel like Bishop. <laughs> Your vacation, here's a uh, note that I made. Your vacation is exempt, null and void, if you won't vacate these mountains. Yeah. Null and void. No vacation for you. Right. Bring me the cruise ticket back. You know, turn it in. Because you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You'll stay in the same place that you are, and next year you'll be there too. Yeah. And you don't know you're not free until you're free. And it's only then that you realize that, wow, I wasn't free. That's right. And I know that because of school. I know that. I didn't know I wasn't free. Yeah. But I am. I'm free now. Amen. So... Um, after I heard the Lord say, you know, that it was a year of vacation, a year of vacating, um, I quickly heard him say this. love that I keep thinking about and wondering where is it think about it there's got to be a higher love now I can say that but God is saying that and what he's really instructing us he's this is your instruction he says bring me bring me a higher love now I had to really meditate on what does that exactly mean a higher love and it took me back just to thinking about Bishop and I and um you know, like when we first got married, um, I thought I loved him. <laughs> and I did. I, di I did. Yeah, and then there were times where I realized I was mistaken, but no. Um, I thought, I, I mean, I remember like thinking, I am just the most blessed individual in the entire world. God loves me so much. He brought me this man and he loves me. And, and then eight years took place maybe 10, and I, I remember walking down the hall <clears throat> of our house, 
And I thought, wow, I really love this man. It was different. Yes. It took me that long. I mean, I loved him then, but it took me that long to understand or just to, you know, just to, I don't know how to explain it other than maybe it was, wow, I know him because I've spent so much time with him and I, I know what he's thinking. In the first eight years of, his, of our marriage, in his marriage, the first eight years of our marriage, I would um, think to myself, like, it would blow me away some things that, you know, were going on, like, I didn't know. Like, you know, I'm one of these people that, you know, if I'm having a bad day, everybody knows it. I'd like to change that about myself, Lord, please. Um, but he's one of these people that you would not know if he's in stress. You would not know if he's discouraged. You would not know. You would not know. I did not know, and I lived with him. But you see, after eight, ten years, I think it might have been ten years even, that all changed. It's like, wow, I know him because of the time and the relationship that I had built with him. You see, that relationship allowed me to bring him a higher love. That relationship that we had together for me knowing him, I could rise above any irritation because I knew him. I could rise above it. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. Can you make the jump over to God? If God says, what? Bring... If he says, He wants you to know him. Right. He wants you to know him. He's not afraid. Some people are afraid to let you know them. Yeah. 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 I have a lot of colleagues like that. But God's not afraid for you to get to know him. In fact, that's what he wants. And that is what's going to bring him a higher love. That is what is going to allow you to know, to be in the mountain of God. You'll want to be there. Yes. You'll want to be there. Want to be. It's not like I have to. Oh, right. it's church. It's I got to go to church. It's not that. It's you want to. So are you hearing me about the whole year of vacation, vacating, um, rest, and um, that he, what the ultimate is, the purpose of your vacation is so you can bring him a higher love. Okay. okay, did you hear it? You can bring him a higher love if you're rested. You know, I, if I walk in the house all spent from school, I'm like, in bishops, like, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm spent. You know, at least give me, at least give me an hour or 45 minutes to like rejuvenate here. See, that's where, you've, that's where we've been. I don't want to say you because me. That's where we've been. We have not been able to bring him that higher love because of being so consumed with all these other things. Now, anything that does irritate you, you'll be able to rise above it because now it's all about a higher love. A higher love is not surface. It's deeper. Yeah. So here's... Here's a few, here's five things that I see. Number one, I see those who will come out from among them and be ye separate will avoid the destruction coming on the seven mountains. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. I see rest is available the first half of the year. Enjoy it. Don't miss it for it is the preparation for what's to come. Number three, I see the Lord is saying, come away with me and see what I see. So you will say what I say, and then you can have what I have. Number four, I see there will be a people who will labor to bring him a higher love and therefore find themselves in peace while others are frantic. Wow. Number five, God, 
I see. This is what I, I truly see this. God is vacating those who continue to live in places that he has instructed them otherwise. No, the same one. Um, God is vacating those who continue to live in places that he has instructed them otherwise. So in other words, separation, those with God and those without God. It will be so obvious because right now you can play church in, by the way, my message is to the body of Christ. My message is not to the world. This prophetic outlook is for the church. Yeah. And, and so I just want to make that clear because inside the church walls, you're going to see, it's going to be obvious this year in who God has vacated and who God is with. I want to be the one that God is with. So I am going to rest in him. I'm going to spend time with him. I'm going to come away with him. I'm going to vacate those other mountains. So that's the first strand. I have some scripture, but I'm going to get to the next point. 5777, now I know that we've been talking about for what, seven years, what 70 means, right? A yin, and it's the eyes, right? So that we can see. But now let's talk about six and seven. Last year was six, 76, and today and this year, beginning today, um, is seven. And so we, I think in the church world, we've been privy to knowing that six is the number of man and seven is the number of God. And so I like what Minister Mike said in the conference room. He said, oh, a little bit of grace with a God and more God and a lot of God. <laughs> and that's what I see. Actually, um, the, the number seven is Zayin. I know, Ayin Zayin. I don't know how these people talk. But it means a sword. Like the pictorial love of a Hebrew word is a sword. And... Um, if you look on the internet anywhere, it's pretty widely accepted that what some people say that this whole thing means is that um, that tribulation will start on the fifth feast of the Lord, which is this one. And then um, from that point forward, seven vials, seven bowls, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven, come on, are going to be poured out. Now, whether you think that's be already started to happen, I'm not here to argue. I don't care. Um, it's, we're here today. But I'm just here to tell you that change is in the air and something drastic is about to take place. And God said he wants you to vacate, come away with him so that you will be protected and safe. Yes. So in this year, I see us moving from man to God. Okay, so in the, you know, seven, completion, fullness, right? So moving from our, from our manhood, our being a man, our, a carnal man, if you will, coming into the fullness of Christ. Yeah. Wow. And when we come into the fullness of Christ, we'll see the manifestations of what we're supposed to see, the power in this year. Wow. Yeah. We will. I'm excited about it. However... You know, God always, you know, brings things to us to prepare us. He, um, he, he knows where we're at, and he's always, can I say, what I'm telling you is available. This whole year of vacating, it's available. But if you want to do it, if you will do it. And here's the process. Here's one of the things that, you know, is going to happen during the seven vials, seven spirits, seven, you name it, seven bowls, etc. That's what I heard him say. Mm-hmm. I'm
if you don't. <laughs> Mr. James says, I'm not afraid of you running around or running away. I get the feeling you won't. But you know what? It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter to God. He says, I don't care whether you love me or you're not. What's coming on the earth is still coming on the earth. Okay. It doesn't matter to me if you are going to be one of the ones that take up residence in the mountain of God or the ones over here. Now, I know the scripture that says it's God's heart that none should perish. But I'm also here to tell you he's sick and tired of warning. Right. All right. And he's, this is the last time he's making the provision for you to rest, come away, get rejuvenated, and get in the place so that you can come into the fullness of Christ. Yeah. My God. Breakdown. Sometimes it t requires a breakdown for you to get there, though. Right. A breakdown does different things to different people. Now, someone had a breakdown today on the way to church. They, their tire got flat, so it prohibited them from being here. Okay, there are breakdowns that God brings in your life. There are breakdowns that you deserve based on stupid choices. And there are breakdowns that the enemy bring, um, has his hand in. Okay. Amen. Right? Yeah, yeah. But what I want to tell you is that. Breakdown. Go ahead. God wants you to, whatever that breakdown is, to give it to him. In other words, don't hang on to it and don't sit there and, and just give it to him. Just give it over. It doesn't matter if you love him or if you don't. He, there is going to be a breakdown, and it's what you do with that breakdown. Just go ahead, get it over, and give it to him. Humble yourself. Re recognize that you're not perfect, that we're not perfect, that I'm not perfect, that no man is perfect, and that God is working on you in this manly state to bring you into the fullness of God. And in, for, in some cases, it will require breakdown. It will require a breakdown. It's all right. It is all right. It's not a bad thing. And if you don't think you're going to experience break, breakdown, then let's just step over here and go someone you know is going to. And you have to know that it's okay. It's all right because it's the only thing that's going to allow them. It's their last chance to come into the place of getting to the mountain of God. Okay. It's their last chance. So if you want to intervene and save, be the savior and save them, then you just go ahead. But you're not helping them. Not helping them. Breakdown is for all of those who have not vacated the seven mountains. There will be a breakdown, all right? Those mountains are going to fall on, on everyone. Yeah. And they are going to cry out. And will the Lord hear them? Go to Psalm 77 and read through there. I think it's about verse 7. I forgot to put it in here. Um, but it talks about, Lord, would you forsake me? Do you not hear me? H have you gotten so angry with me? I, I might not be quoting that just right, but so breakdown, it means to cause to fall or collapse by breaking or shattering. Come on. Some people just need to be broke. Come on, yeah. You know, those people, I know a lot of them. Everything looks perfect on the outside. Maybe it's perfect on the inside. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's something's going to break. Yeah. I got in my car about a, two weeks ago and I was, Bishop and I, I think Bishop was driving, we were driving down our road and drove past an individual who was walking and I said, was that so-and-so? And he said, yeah. And I, like right then I knew, like this person looks like they got it all going on on the outside. And I knew when we passed him that deep sorrow and deep turmoil was taking place uh -huh. on the inside. Yeah. Sounds to me like he needs a Break. Break down, so It, you know, it'll be all right. It's hard to watch people break down, but it's all right if they do. Yeah. Yeah. Breakdown means to make ineffective. You know, there's just th some things God's going to make ineffective this year. Yeah. Things that you trust in, he's going to make ineffective. Yeah. Come on. I don't know where I get all this. Where's that coming from? 
like I'm not trying to be attitude here, um, but it, it gets exciting. Yeah. And um, it's for our benefit that God tells us these things. Yeah. And the things that we don't know that we trust in until they become ineffective. Uh -oh. Until they are, we are forced to not trust in them because they're not producing anymore. All right. Okay. Make ineffective. Breakdown means to divide into parts or categories. You know, break down your shoes into summer and winter. <laughs> Okay, this is the best example I could come up with right now. Break, <laughs> sorry, Everyone, everyone's laughing. Okay, let's think of a more spiritual one. Um, to divide into parts or categories, that's what breakdown means. In other words, you know, you've heard the haves and the haves not, have nots, well that's still not spiritual. Okay, so the have gods and the have not gods. The vacated Christians and the ones who are still in the mountains. Okay. We're gonna break this thing down. We're gonna separate, we're gonna put in the categories so that when judgment takes place, you're in a safe place. Right. Yeah. It means to separate into simpler substances. Decompose, decompose. That's called breakdown, isn't it? Yeah, that's even got a smell to it. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, oh dear. Uh, breakdown means to take apart, especially for storage. Hmm, I don't know, but if you need to be stored somewhere, like in his protection under the wing of the Almighty, it might be possible that you have to be broke down. Breakdown means to stop functioning because of being broke or because of wear. Yeah. Mm. That's why we are not exempt from this. It's not about the world. It's about the church. The breakdown is going to happen. It's how we're going to deal with it when it happens. Because we have to say it's all right. It's all right. A breakdown means to become inoperative or ineffective, fail. It means to fail in strength or vitality. It means to succumb to mental or emotional stress. It means to lose one's resolve. In other words, you're going to give up. People finally figure out they can't do it on their own. They're going to give up and give it over. That means give it up, right? Break down, go ahead and give it to me, God says. Well, give it over. Because if you're going to hang on to it, you're going to die. Come on. You're going to die. You know, God has said literally all that's left to say. I mean, he said it all. I mean, I don't have anything else to say. I mean, that's why I, it's like, you know, you're, you know, having this conversation with your spouse and, and um, it's like, okay, well, I'm done talking because I don't have anything else to say. I've said what I wanted to say. I've heard what you said. I'm done. I'm done talking. Let's move on. And, and that's where God's at. I'm, I'm done. I'm done talking. I've said. I have said all that needs to be said. Yeah. I've said all there is to say. Yeah. See, God's word has a way of unveiling truth until it breaks off the things that we don't need in order to transform us into who we are to become. I'll say that again. God's word has a way of unveiling truth until it breaks off the things that we don't need in order to transform us into who we are to be. I am here to tell you that the breakdown on everyone's lives, all these people that you know and I know that their lives are perfect, I'm here to tell you this year you're going to see a breakdown on them. Now that doesn't mean that we're not going to experience some too, but I will tell you that the better, the more you vacate those mountains, the better chance you have of avoiding a traumatic breakdown. Okay. And see, the thing is, God is only doing this to prepare us to become effective. He's tired of his church being ineffective. He's tired of his church malfunctioning and being useless. He's tired of the church failing. And so he's got to break some things down so we can come into a place of being effective. All right. 
I have this person who's a dear friend of mine. Um, she's one of my colleagues, and um, she has an exchange student, and then they adopted like a junior in high school and blah, blah, blah. And she's never had her own children. She's never been a, a mother by blood, you know. And so this is like something that she wanted. Well, she wanted this so bad that she has, you know, this adopted son now and a, an exchange student um, who's also a son. And I mean, in 26 years of marriage, there's never been any problems. And all of a sudden, there's some problems. And they're going to a, a counselor, a marriage counselor, after 26 years of marriage. But I submit to you that she wanted that family mountain so bad that it is breaking down some other things. In other words, she has sacrificed to that for the sake of what she wanted. And, you know, that's what I see. God will give us over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. He, it, whatever we want, he's going to give it. He's just going to let it. It'll, it'll happen. You know, you've heard people say God doesn't have to destroy the earth. Man's doing a, great, a good enough job all on their own. Yeah. Well, the, the same thing is true. Whatever it is that, that is going to destroy you, he's going to let it happen because you've been warned. Yeah, okay. right. you, you understand what I'm saying? He's going to give you over to that. He's just going to let it happen. Yeah. And then you'll cry out and say, mountain, fall on me. I'm, I just want to die. And you won't be able to. Sobering, sobering thought. Exodus 15, 9 and 10. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. That's, you know, a pharaoh enemy, if you will. But I'm not sure that's even necessary in the breakdown process. I think we're all capable of experience the, experiencing that on our own just from the simple um, piece of will you vacate those places that I've told you to. Yeah. I see five things when it comes to a breakdown. Number one, God himself will be dealing with whom he has previously warned. Like I see the judgment going from man to God. Man won't have to do it anymore. God's, take, God's going to take care of it. Number two, I'm convinced that this fall will prove to be just the start of unprecedented decline in the world's economy. Now, I know that, you know, people have been talking about the world economy forever, but I'm here to tell you we're going to see some unprecedented things taking place, yeah. like soon. Because there's a breakdown. It's a malfunction. It's ineffective. We have greedy people out there, crooks, whatever. Okay, I'm getting off. Number three, I see judgment. Oh, I see judgment has passed from man to God. People will experience the punishment of the sword and will therefore know there is judgment and that they have just been judged. See, the sword is going to judge. Seven, God. It stands, represents a sword. Now, this, you know, we could be in um, church for the entire day and, and talk about and not have exhausted everything that is going to take place and, and everything that 5777 means and, and every, you know, but just simplistically, a sword, a sword, which makes me think and see, I think, and then I see that um, there is absolutely a cutting away and cutting away of the flesh that we may become more like Christ, that we become into the fullness of who he is. Because of all the, um, you know, <laughs> a year of vacation and a year of breakdown, I also see that in those two pieces, God's right back here with, it's a year for the Levites. 
Yeah, I know you're getting a little solemn looking here, but it is a year for the Levites and it's a year for the Levites because of what is coming on the earth, because of what's coming in people that you know. I'm not talking really about the world. I'm talking about your people that you come in contact with that are going to have some breakdown. You're going to be anointed. You know, it's called uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon you and he has anointed you to preach the good news. He's anointed you to preach to the brokenhearted, to the down, to the down and outers, right? He's anointed you. I'm telling you, it's the year of the Levite because it's time that we get anointed, that we get anointed and we break through all the religious stuff, chaos, uh, mindsets that are prohibiting us from getting God to people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see the tribe of the Levites increasing. I see the servanthood and the anointing and therefore their effectiveness increasing. I see new Levites arising and being added to the team. I see others who will have to fight for their place to, be, to remain in the tribe. Otherwise, their last name will be changed. It's a year for the Levites. God's laying the foundation. It's like, um, you know, I, I believe that he's given us like the Cyrus anointing to where we are able to build the foundation of the new temple, the new house. And then he's going to add to it. And then he's going to build upon it. And then we're going to get the Joseph anointings rise up in our team of Levites. And we're going to be prepared for what's coming. We're going to be prepared for the refuge of the city. Yeah. Wow. But all this happens because we have vacated. All this happens because we've been broken down to the raw core of God and we've come into the fullness of where he has us to be. Okay. Yeah. And so a year for the Levite. If you're thinking, well, I'm not a part of the Levite tribe. Well, do you want to be? I think I heard God say the tribe is increasing. Yeah. Amen. Now you're either called or you're not. But you know what? you got so much stuff. You've been consumed with all this other stuff that who knows? That call could be there, but it could be covered up. Yeah. If you get alone with God and you vacate, we'll see who you really are. And you'll see who you really are. And as you come into the fullness of Christ, who knows? Who knows what's in there? Yeah. Only he does. And I'm here to tell you that I specifically heard him say the tribe is increasing. Yeah. Mm. I see this phrase that is pretty spectacular to me. Uh, I see it, but I hear it. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, I can see it like in writing that the phrase is be the phrase we're going to hear more and more. And every time we assemble is surely the Lord was in this place. Surely the Lord was in this place. See, that's the foundation. And when that is laid, then people will come. And not until then will people come. Surely the Lord is in this place. Now I'm not naive to know that um, in these past years, year, month, six months, that as ministers, that as Christians, that we have been at war and that we have touched some dead things. And so when we touch dead things, we get contaminated. When we live with dead things, we get contaminated. When we work with dead things, it's tough not to get contaminated. 
But in Numbers 31, it, it talks about this purifying process. And I'm here to tell you that, um, you know, I really believe that the Lord is wanting us on this day to purify ourselves so that we're ready to vacate, so that we're okay with um, the breakdown that happens, you know, in our life if need be, and that we can handle the breakdown in others, and that we are the anointed Levite tribe like he's called us to be. So Numbers 31, 21, 24. Then the priest said to the soldiers who had gone into battle, this is the requirement of the law that the Lord gave Moses. Okay, requirement of the law that the Lord gave Moses. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, and lead. And anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire and then it will be clean. In other words, why that breakdown? Because we have to be able to go through the fire and be clean. Yeah. We have to be able to get to the place where God can anoint us in a greater measure. Okay. Okay. And on verse 24, it says, On the seventh day, wash your clothes and you'll be clean, and then you may come into the camp. So, out there, in the course of life, we have gotten contaminated. We've touched on clean things. We've been at war. We've been in the battle. And so we have to come into that purifying process as well so that we're ready to come into the fullness of Christ. I'll tell you, when the tribe of Levites come into the fullness of Christ, there ain't no devil on this earth or in hell that can stop what God's going to do in his kingdom on the earth. I came to announce that these things are going to be taking place this year and you get to decide what you're going to do with it. I personally am deciding to be in that place where God can bring me into his fullness. I'm personally deciding that I'm going to vacate all those other things that take my time, that wear me out. And I am personally going to decide that I'm going to take the vacation that God intended for me, this temporary intermission. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to, I'm going to bring him a higher love. Yeah. And as a result, there might be some breakdown in the process, kind of break off the you know, hard places. There might be some cleanup that needs to take place. But I'm willing to do it because I want to come into the place of the blessing for the year of being in that place where God, what God wants to pour out on the Levite tribe. The prophetic outlook. 5775. Oh, excuse me. See, my brain sees five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you probably need that extra grace this year. I'm sorry. The prophetic outlook, 5777. Wow. Is he returning this year? All the signs point that way, but I know. It's like Bishop said when he started the service, that it's simply a rehearsal. And we have to be ready. Yeah. And one day he will return. And I had um, scripture, you might want to, I see it didn't print out. Um, the uh, scripture that says Matthew 24, 21 through 24, it talks about um, being ready. Being ready for the servant, or when your um, when your master comes and and you're not doing anything, you know. So that what is it? Oh, I thought somebody said something. Um, that's a great scripture. I hope you heard the announcement. I hope you decided, made some decisions in your own life right now, and. Um, you know, it wouldn't be a prophetic outlook day unless we had some prophecy, right? <laughs> um, but I do, I can smell the food. Uh, so 
I'm not going to cut this short, but I am going to encourage you that we have two awesome um, prophets coming tomorrow night and Tuesday night, and then all three of us on Wednesday night. And we want to prophesy the this new year into your life. We want to prophesy your ability to vacate those places that you ought not be. We want to prophesy into your life that you would be in a safe place because you've made the right choice to leave those mountains and to, and to take up residence in the mountain of God. Yeah. We want to prophesy in your life that the breakdown would do what it needs to do, and that is bring you into the fullness of Christ. Yeah. We want to prophesy that you would become part of the Levite tribe that would help usher in the return of the Lord, that would help prepare the bride, would help prepare the bride guests, the guests, the, the people at the banquet, the bride supper, whatever you call it, that we would prepare them. I want to prophesy that all in your life. It's still the month of repentance. <laughs> it's still time. Ten days of repenting. I am going to get my little spreadsheet out, and I am literally going to keep track of my time. And not that this is, um, you know, you know, you, know, you got to get the spirit with it, but um, I want to know. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to think I'm somewhere that I'm not. And when I see that I've spent how much time cooking? <laughs> okay, that was meant to just lighten it up. But when I see how much time I've chopping, not, but whatever, fill in the blank, I want to know that that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And that is why God said, I need to, hello, have a vacation. I need rest. That, that's wearing me out. Yeah. 40 day fast. A 40-day fast. Well, I mean, stop cooking for 40 days. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought Bishop was declaring a 40-day fast or something. <laughs> Minister James just broke out a sweat. <laughs> no, but I, I, I this, this, this is, you know, this is good. This is good news, and and um, and you know, like I always say, it's self-examination. You know, nobody needs to tell you you're spending too much time at work. Nobody needs to tell you you're spending too much time in the media, um, entertainment mountain. N nobody needs to tell you anything because you know. But do you? Do you really know? You won't until you keep track for a couple of weeks, a week at a time. How much? You remember the divine order of time that I um, preached on? Actually, Bishop preached on it, but I kind of recapped it. That was amazing. I started really trying to do that, and then, you know, I lost the enthusiasm. Um, what's that? Backslid. Yeah, I backslid. Okay. I was trying to say I just lost the enthusiasm. Bishop has to say it like it is. I backslid. Um, but I'm, I'm back here, and I want to know. I want to know. I don't want to be deceived because God said we are in bondage and we don't know it. And he said we think we're free, but we're not. And he knows. So I'm, I'm going to take a look. How about you? Amen. Well, Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for preparing your people. Thank you for giving us the rest we need and telling us how to accomplish that, Lord. We yield ourselves to you today. We thank you that you have made provision for every place that you see your body, every place that you see the bride, that you have spoke into the lives of every individual who's hearing this telecast or hearing this live. Lord, we thank you today that this year we're going to make a difference as a nation, as a BAM nation. This year we're going to become effective because we're going to vacate those places that you told us to for the 15th time. We're going to come into this place of being broke down to the point where we know that you are only, you are the only one that can fix us. We can't fix ourselves. Our lives aren't perfect. And so we look to you that you fix us, Lord. 
you, you cause us to become whole that we might minister to others that same way. We might show others that straight path. Hmm. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Now, Minister Mike, I'm just going to um, speak into your life that, um, that rest is your portion right now. If you will obey God, rest in your body, but mostly rest in your mind. See, it's your mind that causes that body to never stop. And God is going to still that mind to a point where you'll be able to rest. You'll make the decisions necessary for you to rest, rest, rest. And as you do, you're going to see the anointing increase. You're going to see yourself write new songs. You're going to see you come into the fullness that God has for you that you only have dreamed of, but you get a glimpse now and then. But it's like, then where's it go? Where's it go? Oh, I guess it's not time yet. Yes, it is. God says it's time and it's going to be this season. If you will rest that it, I will cause you to come into that place. Anointed Levite. Anointed Levite. Anointed Levite. Anointed Levite. Anointed, anointed, and more anointed, Levite. I'm putting a demand on that call in your life that you would come into the fullness of Christ. Come into the fullness of Christ now. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. Now, I don't know if you've noticed around here, but most of us, or can I say a lot of us, man, the sand's in my shoes. Um, a lot of us are the Levite tribe. Okay? So, and if you think you're excluded, you're not, because you're either the son or daughter of a Levite, or you're the, you know, brother of a Levite or something. You're, you're in there. And like I said, it's a year for it's a year for us. 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 My God. It's a year for us. Finally. It's a year for you, Minister Ryan. It's a year for you. Minister Riley, it's a year for you. You're probably the one that's going to rise up with the Cyrus anointing. Bishop, you're probably going to be the one that rises up with the Joseph anointing. It's our year. Mm. <sighs> DC and Stephanie... I prophesied to you, D.C., I think, was it last week? Maybe the week before. And I said, some things are just not that spiritual. Some things are just some natural things. And this morning was that very thing. And as you take a leap of faith, and as you listen to the right voices, God will bring you into this place. He will bring you into the city. He will bring you into this tribe. start now don't think too long you've already had months to think if you've been at Starbucks God is revealing two things to you as he said he would if you haven't been there with your Bible then get there amen Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mm. You know how it is when you want to, you, you just want to declare some things. And God knows what we need. He knows whether you need encouragement. He knows whether you need a spanking. He knows whether you need, you know, correction or whether you need uh, to be lifted up, to be strengthened. And you know what? You know what the best thing is about this house? Is that all of us have this place in our heart that we want the next person to experience the best that God has for them. And so our heart, our motive always is to help them get to that place. And if it comes across a little direct, well, you know, God made some of us a little direct. Sand is stuck to my shoes now. So don't, you know, I guess I just want to say don't be, um, don't feel bad. Don't allow yourself to be condemned if, if a word ha- comes your way that, you know, you think is a little hard or harsh. It's, it's meant to move you. And talking to myself here, talking to myself. Praise God. Man, God, you're good. You are so good. Thank you. Surely the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this place. But I know it. See, if you look at that scripture, it says, then we did not know it, but we know it. We know it.